what's up film crew? I just got a Sony ZV-E10 camera and the new 11 millimeter F 1.8 wide angle lens and a whole bunch of accessories for this kit. So in this video, we're actually gonna be setting up this ZV-E10 camera bag for the very first time. I chose this camera as my third Sony camera body for many reasons. Yes, I do have two other Sony cameras and this is gonna be the baby of the bunch. So naturally, I'm super excited. I mean, just look how cute and small it is. But I say small because the other two cameras I have are a Sony a7R 3 and a Sony Cinemaline FX3, which are much chunkier than this little camera, which can fit right in your pocket. So we're gonna unbox all this stuff here and everything should hopefully fit in this tiny little bag. But first, let's go over what else comes in the box. The microphone's built into the top here, so it comes with this little wind fur that goes over the top there just to block some of that wind noise out. Sony FW50 battery. Sony camera strap, but I actually have another strap that we're gonna use instead of this one, so I'll leave it in the box. A USB-C cable to charge the camera because it doesn't actually come with a charger, although it does come with a wall cube and the USB-C cable for charging the battery inside the camera, but we have something to solve that problem as well. And then last but not least, the kit lens. I think the ZV-E10 is crazy good, especially for the price point that it's at. I've advocated over this camera over the last two weeks so much on set that my friend Danielle actually bought one of her own immediately after using mine. This is Danielle. Follow me at by Danielle Francis on Instagram and on YouTube. So I've been using this camera all day behind the scenes and so far I really like it. It's super lightweight. The lens is interchangeable. The settings are pretty easy to kind of go through. And I mean, it's very affordable. Um, Ray has the black and I ordered the white and she'll be getting here today. I'm not kidding. It actually performs way better than I imagined. It has features that my A7R 3 doesn't even have like eye autofocus for video, red tally lights. It also has unlimited recording time and a flippy screen, which is great for vlogging and filming yourself or getting some crazy angles. And those are all features that my FX3 has. So the ZV-E10 is actually taking the place of my a7R 3 as my B camera more than I actually anticipated. So let's go ahead and go over everything and get this thing rigged out. So a couple things to get out of the way right off the bat. Screen protector is an absolute no brainer. I get the tempered glass screen protectors because this is a touch screen and you're gonna be able to tap to focus and stuff like that. So this is an absolute must have. You've gotta get a screen protector put on here to protect this glass from getting scratched up or damaged. Also, you need a memory card. I use the pro grade memory cards. You don't have to get one this fast. This is just one that I have for my FX3, but it works in here perfectly fine. You can get a cheaper card though because you don't need the fastest speed for this camera necessarily it does shoot 4k but you don't need the fastest cards on this so you can get this tiny little pocket size 4k camera for 699 dollars i got the kit that comes with the zoom lens for 799 dollars which i highly recommend getting it with the kit lens so this is a 16 to 50 millimeter zoom lens that you can get for $100 if you buy it with the camera, or you can get it for $350 if you buy it separately. So it definitely makes more sense to buy it with the camera. So it is a variable aperture lens, which means it does lose a little bit of light as you zoom in. But uh, speaking of zoom, it does have this power zoom feature. So you're able to zoom in and zoom out just by using this little lever right on there. Or alternatively, there's a little zoom rocker that you can go telephoto or wide here just at your fingertips, which is oddly very, very similar to my $4,000 Sony FX3. But anyways, I digress. All right, next up we have the new 11 millimeter APS-C lens. So one of my favorite features about this camera is actually the animal eye autofocus. Continuous autofocus for your pet or animals or whatever you're doing, whether you're shooting wildlife or you're shooting your own pet. So check this out.
and here it is. Brand new 11 millimeter F 1.8 comes with the lens hood. It is $550 for this lens, but it is an F 1.8 and it's super wide. So it's very, very good for vlogging. Yeah, Josh has this kitty mic'd up. Jeez. Wow. That's loud. This is what it's like shooting Halloween stuff summer also it's a prime lens so being 1.8 you're able to let in a lot of light and get a really blurry background you can also zoom in and zoom out on the zve 10 using clear image zoom but you do lose some autofocus performance whenever you crop in using clear image zoom so i don't recommend you know zooming in on this lens too much if you don't need to because it's not really a zoom lens it's not made for that you're digitally cropping in but the camera is able to do it because you have this nice 4k 24 megapixel sensor but if you're a vlogger this 11 millimeter lens is amazing it doesn't have any OSS in it, which is your stabilizer, but the camera has built in active steady shot, which does crop in a little bit like 1.5 X, but it leaves plenty of room around your frame. So whenever you're on the kit lens at 16 millimeter, it looks like this. It is wide enough to vlog on, but you can smooth out your shots a little with active steady shot. It's a little bit too tight for me. Also, the 11 millimeter F 1.8 aperture will give you a super blurry background and it's great for low light shooting. Whereas in the kit lens, it gets a little bit darker the more you zoom in. So the kit lens goes from an F 3.5 to F 5.6 whenever you zoom all the way in. So it's not as good at low light or vlogging in my opinion. I also added on this cheap $30 variable ND filter. I got the 58 millimeter size, even though this lens thread is actually a 55 millimeter thread because it's so wide angle that I wanted to get just a little bit bigger filter just in case there was any kind of vignetting. So in order to be able to adapt to a slightly larger filter, you use what's called this step up ring. So I got one of these from 55 millimeter thread that adapts 58 millimeter filters. So I'm able to use this 58 millimeter filter on this lens. And what this does is it darkens your image so you're able to shoot at an f1.8 without changing any settings or anything like that. Let's say you like to shoot in manual like I do. You can just rotate this filter and it will darken your image. So I added that KNF filter on there, but I recommend, you know, getting the best quality filter you can get. Although with this one right now, I'm just starting off with the cheap one. So that's always a great option to start with a cheap one, figure it out, and then move up to a more expensive one later on if you find that it's really useful for you. Now this part may not apply to everybody, but I like putting a camera cage on all my cameras. It just protects them and it makes it where you can rig them out a little better with different handles and microphones and things like that. So I got the ZV-E10 cage from Small Rig. Ooh, nice. I like when they make the sides that are more form fitted with the body because it's just more comfortable on your hand whenever you're holding the camera. So it comes with an Allen key, a screw, and another little bracket for mounting the camera on here, very solid. Let's get this put on. Now on the bottom of the cage, there's actually a little magnetic flathead so you can just screw it right into the cage with the tool built into it. There's your one point of contact and now you can just drop your magnet right back in the bottom of the cage. In the little bag, it also has this other tiny little bracket that goes right underneath the camera strap holder, just like that. And it actually provides a second form of contact to the cage, which keeps it from rotating. The cool thing about small rig is they have thought of the user because the actual cage itself covers up the graphic on the camera that says off and on. So they added an off and on graphic right there and a C1 or a custom one button just so you know where they covered up a graphic right there. There's even a small little place in our indention for the record button which makes it easier to find whenever you're searching for it on top. You can just feel that little groove right there where the record button is. So very, very cool. There's also a nice little cutout here for your shutter button as well. And there are some camera strap holders at the top, a couple different mounting options here. 
mounting options on the side, mounting options on the bottom. It adds a cold shoe on the bottom here and a cold shoe on the top as well. So a lot of different mounting options. This cage also works perfectly with the doors that are on here. And this camera actually has really nice doors on it too. So here is the microphone in jack right here. And then you have this door, which has your USB-C port for streaming and charging the camera. You also have a micro HDMI port there if you wanna use an external monitor or wireless video. And you have a headphone out jack, which most cameras that are in this price point seem to not have a headphone jack, which is crazy to me. So you have that right there and everything is perfectly accessible in the cage. Next, we're gonna go over some of these Peak Design products that I picked up. So on all my cameras, I have these little red anchors on there. The camera cage has a place here that you can slip your anchors or your camera strap through. So you can use the one that it came with or I like looping these through because I'll show you in just one second. And there you go. Now we have our Peak Design anchors on here and let me show you what these are great for. Next, we have the Peak Design Leash camera strap. So this is just a super thin, lightweight camera strap that's quick to adjust the bag for it and accessories in here. You have an anchor here. There's an anchor here with a plate that can go at the bottom of your camera. You also have the wrench for tightening everything. It also comes with a Peak Design sticker. I have one of these on like so many of my Pelican cases. I love when brands include a sticker with their packaging. And here's how quick these straps work. You just drop your anchor in and slide it down and you're locked in just like that. To take it back off, you just simply push down in and pull it out. I'm all about the quick release stuff from Peak Design. I have their tripod as well, which works with this capture clip here where you're able to quickly pop your camera off and on your backpack strap on your chest or your camera bag. I have one here that I keep on this Sony bag. So I'm able to keep the camera just able to quickly access it. And I also keep one on my backpack. It comes with a carrying pouch with several more goodies, another Allen key, and some screws. If you want to actually mount this permanently, you can screw it down with these bolts here. So this is how the capture clip works. You just slide this little rubber padded area onto whatever backpack strap or whatever you want it on, close it down, and then screw these down into place. And this is the camera plate that comes with it, which is compatible with Arca Swiss on the Ronin. And it's also compatible with several other kits and tripods and stuff that you might be using already. And then you can just easily drop your camera right into the slot just like that. And it locks into place. So you don't have to worry about your camera falling or anything like that. And whenever you want to take it off, there's a little lever here on the side. You press that down and your camera can come right back out. So this video is not sponsored, but but I do like Peak Design products because they're just quick release and really easy to use and really high quality products as well. So this is a Peak Design bag. I have the capture clip on here so you can just drop your camera right on there just like that. And then you're able to simply hit the release and you're back to handheld. Then this can drop right onto their travel tripod just like that. And let's say you want to take your straps off. They come off, you know, with just a couple fingers just like that popping them out. So I like all that quick release popping off type of stuff. And it's just more convenient and helps me to get my shots a little bit faster. So I do like Peak Design products. And speaking of tripods, I also added on this extendable Ulanzi vlogger tripod. So let's pop this open. Allen key and the tripod itself. So this is just a tiny little lightweight tripod option. So you can extend it just like that if you need to get a little extra reach on your vlog or you need a little bit higher of an elevation for your tripod. And it also has a cold shoe on the side if you wanna put a light or a microphone or something on here. Alternatively, you can release this top part and unscrew it, flip it this way and screw it back in. And now you have a tripod that can hold a cold shoe there, you know, so you can put your flash or whatever you want on here as well. Okay, and the next part is something I'm gonna kind of recommend that you do not get, but let me explain why. So I picked up this Vimico 
battery kit here because I thought it looked cool. It came in this nice little zippered pouch and it comes with a dual charger. I thought the batteries look cool too because they're orange, you know, just something different and orange being on brand with my colors and you know sony just makes sense you know so i thought these look really cool why don't i try these out two batteries and a dual charger with a cable and a case for only 23 dollars like why not but whenever i put these actually into my camera i couldn't get the batteries out so i had to get two screwdrivers and actually pry the battery out so i recommend getting some extra batteries for your kit and the good thing about this is i'm still going to be able to use this dual charger on here which is powered through USB-C, has a little screen on it so that part's all fine and dandy and i'm going to keep the case but these batteries i just simply cannot use because they are too big for the zve 10s so i don't know if that's just the ones that i got or you know that's something to look out for in the future but i just wanted to warn you about these particular ones and any third party batteries may have a hard time you know working with your camera so what did i do i bought an additional charger this charger is made by sony because this camera doesn't come with a charger you have to charge the battery inside the camera by plugging it into USB-C so I got an official Sony battery and an official Sony charger on the side just so I have an extra battery so I recommend getting the official Sony batteries instead of getting third-party ones but this just may be my particular case so let me know down in the comments if you've had any good experience with third-party batteries and this camera I got this Sony bag just a small compact bag i picked this up at best buy for i think 30 bucks or something like that so very very inexpensive bag it's an official sony bag it has a little slot here for an extra sd card if you want to put a card in there and three different zippered pouches so it also comes with these removable velcro walls so you're able to you know, position anything in here how you need necessary for your kit. So the ZV-E10 sits in there just like that, nice and flat, no problems there. And then you can also drop your additional lens, your microphone top. We can throw the additional battery and battery charger on the side over here. We can throw our ND filter on this other side the wall charger and cable that came with the camera then we can put our peak design strap back in its little pouch and drop this in here and we still have extra room if we need so the only thing we don't really have room for is this little mini tripod so what i do is zip the bag up like this and then clamp it in here in the front just like that so it kind of holds the tripod in here in the bag just like that put the capture clip back on this bag and we're good to go so everything all fits inside here nicely and we're nice and compact and we have this full kit in here so i'm super excited to have this zv e10 i've been shooting on it a ton lately i've been passing around this camera on my film shoots and having people use it as a bts camera as well so a lot of footage coming your way plus reviews for this new 11 millimeter and review for the zv e10 as well so make sure you're subscribed for that shoot for the stars and i'll see you guys very soon in the next video.